Good day and welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to take this Dell Latitude 5440. We're going to unbox it. We're going to do a partial disassembly of it. We're going to upgrade it. We're going to provide a full review and a benchmark uh, of this unit. And we are going to explain the difference between, you know, uh, a Dell Latitude 3440, a 5440, 7440, that kind of stuff. We'll also go over all of the ports. And this is, uh, while this is useful for everybody, it's really valuable for corporate buyers. The Latitude is the corporate grade product. And if you're buying these in quantities, there are some big differences that uh, seem small initially when you're just skimming through them, uh, but they might bite you if you don't get them right. So as we're going through and doing the upgrades and the disassembly, we'll explain some of the differences between this and these other products that really might save you some money and pain in the future. Let's get to it. So the first thing to look at is the box. Somebody always wants to know what's going on with the box and the answer is nothing. I'm in Canada, so I have a North American plug, but it's a universal adapter so you can take it anywhere in the world, just like you'd expect. Okay, let's start with the boring side. You've got a headphone jack, you've got a USB 3.1 with a super speed. You've also got an HDMI port, that's HDMI 2.0 and a Kensington lock. The interesting side is here. That is a card reader, it is optional. It doesn't exist on all 5440s. That's for a nano SIM if you have the optional cellular and this is what makes this particular unit special. This is two Thunderbolt 4 ports. That means it's the, the full support for USB 4.0. They provide power, you can put video out of them, and the CPU and video card that are built into this support a total of four displays. That's one built in and, two, and three uh, additional, and that is done through these Thunderbolt ports. Then you've got another USB 3 super speed port, and very nice, you have a physical RJ45 jack for your network. You may never use it, but man, is it helpful when you need it. It's one of the big advantages to avoiding the 7440. The 7440 is the big brother to this. It's thinner, it's lighter. By the way, this weighs three pounds, which is, you know, super light. Everybody should be very happy with three pounds. But the 7440 is a little thinner and it has a carbon fiber uh, cover, so it's a little bit lighter, but it won't have this port just can't fit it in. And speaking of ports, the 3440 doesn't have Thunderbolt ports. That is a huge drawback. So almost everybody that's buying corporate grade is going to want to have buy the 5440 unit. There's even a 9440, by the way, which is a two-in-one. This is not, this is simply a 14-inch touchscreen. We also chose the Intel i7-1365U CPU. Now that's important because there are options. You can get an i5, for instance, CPU. Now when you benchmark these out, not a lot of difference. So I wouldn't stress too much about the CPU, the i5 or the i7, the uh, i7-1355U or the i7-1365U. When you check the benchmarks, they're all very close. The video is integrated uh, into the uh, CPU and it is running the Intel Iris XE 13th generation, which is actually pretty darn powerful. By the way, this unit is going into an executive who currently has a Dell 5300 2-in-1 that we reviewed a few years ago. Great product, but it only has an 8th generation 4-core CPU. This is a 13th generation 10-core CPU and it will handle 12 threads. And as far as the video upgrade goes, from that old chip, the video is about three times more powerful. To give an example of that, the old Intel i7-8665 had 192 shader units. This is 768. As far as memory goes, this unit can process 102 gigabit per second, whereas the old one could handle 38 gigabit per second. You add all of that up, the system should be about twice as powerful. The numbers say more than that, but there's lots of other things to slow them down and level them back out. All right, let's get to opening this up and upgrading it. Now, why would we upgrade a brand new machine that we just unboxed? Well, because the hard drive that this shipped with was only a 512 gig PCI-3 drive. This unit is capable of supporting PCI-4, which is much faster, and the user needs a lot of disk space. So we've purchased a two terabyte drive for them. 
Now, as you can see, we have specialized tools, but you don't need them because Dell has gone away from using Torx and other silly screws to just using regular Phillips, which is the star. One of the few things we don't like about these new latitudes, well, new being the last few years, is they don't have a pry point on them. So you've got to take something really flat and uh, smooth like this old card. And then what we normally do is just look for an area that's sort of not put down all the way, like this corner, and pry it in there. Sometimes we grab the screw and lift it up. Anyway, let's just slide this along. This will work. Lovely metal back, super light, magnesium, I think. Very, very nice. All right, let's go over the parts before we start changing things out. First thing, the battery. This is a three, the standard Dell 3-cell 54-watt-hour battery. This is going to be good for 9, 10 hours. It's probably rated for more, but that's what it's actually going to last, which is just great. That's a nice long flight. Speakers, you're never going to touch these, so we'll, we're not going to delve into them more. Memory, easy to pop out, easy to pop in. You know, nothing exciting there, just typical SO dims. You may think that the, your CPU is under here, but it's not. That's the CPU fan. That's a heat pipe. The CPU is under there. This is using integrated video, uh, which is what's available on the 3440, 5440. But on the 7440, you can buy an AMD Radeon video card. But that's not possible for this one. This is the BIOS battery, so if your machine goes to hell, unplug it, disconnect this little cell right here, and you can disconnect the, bat the main battery and let everything drain, and hopefully things will be happier when you plug them back in. There's a WAN slot. You can see we're not using it. It's just a little M.2 slot. Uh, this is your Wi-Fi. There's two cables. You might ask why two cables. They're antennas. Uh, one's going behind the keyboard and the other's going behind the screen so you can move this in any direction and it will keep working. And believe it or not, that is your hard drive. Let's pop it out. Believe it or not, that is a half terabyte solid state M.2 PCI E th version 3 is what this one is. NVMe hard drive. Amazing. What's more amazing? The two terabyte we're going to put in it because you're here to see what this will do out of the box. We're going to put this one back in, benchmark it. And while we're waiting for this to finish off, let's go over a couple of uh, important things. Uh, the first thing is the backlit keyboard is on the Dell Latitude 3440, 5440, 7440, and 9440. So in other words, on all of the current generation. Uh, one of the things we really liked about this particular model was the infrared camera. That lets us use Windows Hello. In other words, we can just sit down and have our executive sign in just with his face. Uh, if he doesn't want to do that, which I know he does because he loves it on the current uh, unit he's got, he can also use a fingerprint scanner, which is built into the power button. And let's take a quick look at the manuals while we're sitting here. And you can see there's nothing that it shipped with. Basically, plug it in, turn it on. Okay, that's complex. Warranty and safety, nothing. Uh, and the last thing I want to go over is uh, a claim I've seen on several websites, which is just fiction. They say that the low-end uh, 3440 doesn't have the high-resolution HD screen, 1920 by 1080 screen. That's wrong. It absolutely does. In fact, you can get this exact screen on the 3440. What you don't get on the 3440, the big difference on the lower-end product, is you don't get, it's a different motherboard, so you don't get these ports. And uh, no Thunderbolt, no USB 4, no interest. Uh, we we want to keep these things for a few years and for an extra, oh my God, what, an extra $100, $200? This is definitely the better machine. Okay, this is actually going to be set up for work. This is how you get around having to have a Microsoft account. So you select work, you select sign in options, uh, domain join, and then you put in whatever username you want. I'm going to call, call this user1. I don't want a password. Bingo. All right, before we do any benchmarking and uh, complete our review, we have to update it. So we're going to run Windows Update, then we're going to run the Dell Update to make sure everything's current. Then we're going to turn off the antivirus because you don't want anything running in the background. It's not fair for a benchmark. Run the benchmark, do our comparison, be on our way. Okay, so Novavench is done. 
Now let's take a look at a couple of things. Uh, one of the most interesting things here is the storage score. You can see that's the hard drive. And you can see here, this is coming through on sequential at 2650. The memory is okay, but it's DDR4 as you can see, and worse than DDR4, not the DDR4 is, boy, that sounds very negative. It's the slow DDR4, it's a 3200. It's the slowest you can put in here. The Iris XE graphics, pretty good. And of course, the uh, Intel CPU, the i7-1365U, again, doing okay. And its Nova Bench score is 1487. Now you should always run a benchmark at least three times to get a realistic number, but we are going to wipe this machine out. We're going to replace the uh, drive that's in here with the new uh, TimeTech two terabyte drive, which is a much faster drive and of course much larger. And let's see how it performs. But before we get to that, let's give you our review. So now it's time for the review of the Dell Latitude 5440. What do we think of it? Well, let's go over the negatives first, then we'll go over the positives. Negatives. First thing that they that we don't like is that they use the cheapest RAM they could. They use DDR4 or 3200. Is that going to make a difference to corporate users? No, they're not even going to notice. But they could have used RAM as fast as DDR5 5200, and we think they should have used something in between. They literally used the bottom spec RAM that they could. Again, for corporate users, not going to notice, but a little frustrating. Uh, the next thing is the uh, CPU. Yes, the uh, the i7 CPU, the 1365U, pretty good chip. But if you uh, spec it against the other chips that uh, are available with this, you will notice that there's not a huge amount of difference uh, in them. And uh, one of the things that we would have really liked to uh, have purchased, but we were not able to get in the, uh, at least not as readily available, is the P-Series CPU. So this is a U, that's the ultra portable uh, CPU uh, spec. And what that means is the fan will come on less, it will use less power, the battery will last longer, all of those great things. The user that's getting this particular laptop is a power user. And I think that the P, which is performance, the higher spec CPU at the same number, so you know, 13 uh, Intel i7-1365P, which I don't think exists, that exact model, but you get the idea. The performance would have been a better choice for this particular unit. However, it's what we can get, and the U is fine. It provides 10 cores and 12 threads, so it's going to fly. Another terribly small thing that we would have liked to see is a 60 frame per second camera. It's only a 30 frame per second camera. Most people are gonna care? No, especially corporate users. However, we're in a connected world, and uh, while this is an infrared camera, and that makes a big difference, because you know infrared allows us to take, uh, you know, to use Windows Hello and uh, to sign in with biometrics, a 60 frame per second camera would have been a nice change. Okay, now what do we like about it? What we like about it, build quality. It's got the typical Dell build quality. No junk, feels very solid. It's only three pounds. So yes, you can move up to the uh, 74, the Dell Latitude, 7440 get a little bit thinner but if you do that what you're going to lose is that port which you may never use but boy you're going to want to have it if you can uh, because when it when you need it you need it the rj45 port super handy once in a while we like the fingerprint scanner we love the infrared camera we love the touch screen and we really like that this unit is going to have the legs to last a few years because it's got thunderbolt 4 and you, which is USB 4 as well. We will be able to connect up to three additional monitors to this unit. Very, very nice. Uh, we also like that they didn't cheap out on the HDMI. Instead of being HDMI 1.4, it's HDMI 2.0. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. So overall, what do we think of the Dell Latitude 5440? We love it. Is it the best laptop in the world? Nope but it is rock solid. Now, this thing uh, listed at about $3,200 Canadian. We paid a little less than $1,500 for, I think $1,440 or something like that, uh, Canadian. So for easy math, you know, uh, 1100 US. That's a bargain for a corporate grade, serious laptop. Our executives are going to like to use this and the techs that support them are going to like to work on it. We're now going to pull this apart and we're going to put in the TimeTech drive, which is a two terabyte drive, and we're going to re-benchmark it, reload the operating system, see if it makes a difference. We'll put a link in the top right-hand corner if you have a, a, an interest in that. 
But either way, hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Subscribes also always appreciated. And you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Uh, or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will. Because on YouTube, everybody has an opinion. Hey, thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.